Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous and in today's special craftmas episode, we're going to do a reverse canvas project using heat transfer vinyl. So let's get to it. So Megan, what is a reverse canvas? So a reverse canvas is kind of like its name. It is basically where the wood is at like the front and then the canvas material will be at the back. So reverse canvas, but it's not just like you put vinyl here. It's like there's a bigger process, which we'll show you in today's video. So what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to make a design in Inkscape and then we'll show you how to like kind of digitize it and silhouette to be useful for this. And then we're going to be putting the design on the canvas. Yeah, and there's going to be some disassembly involved in taking this canvas off of the frame or reapplying our design and it back onto the frame. All right, Megan. So why don't you go get to designing? Let's go. First, I'm going to change the document properties to the size of my canvas to kind of visualize where everything goes. Now I'm going to create my tree using the Bezier tool. I'll make it in a zigzag look like our faux etch frame video. I'll press X to get rid of the fill and shift green to get a color. I'll double tap the tree to get to my node tool and edit the tree a little bit. Right now I need to make a star, but I couldn't figure out how to change the number of corners to how I like, which now I see how to do it after already filming, so I ended up just making it from scratch. I'm going to shrink the star, and I'll hold control while doing so so it doesn't distort. I'm going to click the text and font tool on the side, and I'll write text saying merry and bright. I'm going to choose a font. Now I'll turn my text to a path, I will also break it apart so I can move around the individual letters. I'm changing the color to silver just to visualize because we only have silver and green heat transfer vinyl. Now I'll further break apart the eye so I can get rid of the dot to replace with a star, which I'll copy and paste from the tree. Command C, Command V. Now I'll save my design as a PDF, which I'll turn into a JPEG because my Silhouette Studio Basic Edition doesn't take SVGs or PDFs. I'm going to go to the Trace tool, and I'm just going to trace my design. And I'll trace each color separately, For my star, I have to delete a few nodes because my tree got into the tracing. I'll go to the color palette tool and I'm going to add colors to each of the tracings. I'm going to add rectangles for a reference point. And I'll move the two colors away from each other for where I'll put the vinyl on the mat. Finally, I can send the design. So we have to put shiny side down. So one thing that I wasn't really thinking about is these reference points aren't really going to work because they don't stick. Like this isn't sticky material like our vinyl stickers are. I think we're going to have to eyeball putting it on there. At least it isn't a design where it's very important to have everything Right, straight, so it's, it's just like you kind of just put the tree somewhere underneath the star. But something to consider that. We probably should have done something else to get 
get this to line up better. Okay, so when we took the canvas off, we learned that they did not glue this together. So it's literally in pieces. And if we left it like that, then it wouldn't stay together because we don't plan on using the canvas over the sides to hold it together. We're just going to secure it onto the back. So we need to put some wood glue on this and glue it together. Yep. Christina. Just want to make sure it's perfectly square and that looks pretty perfect. Now we're going to iron this out, which should shrink the canvas a little bit and straighten this out for us. And then we can go ahead and put our design on it. So how are we attaching it back on the wood? We're going to just staple it back on. All right, so we need to set our temperature for 275. Let that heat up. So how's this going to look? We need to put like that, right? Yeah. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the excess of this here. Okay, make sure I'm not going to be blocking any of the design. Looks good. What do you mean by blocking the design? Well, because we're doing two colors and two layers, I wanted to make sure that the covering the protector for this one wasn't going to be blocking the star from going down and you can see here that it will not so the star should stick down just perfect it's getting there but it's still not not quite so I'm not pulling it off. You want to let this cool before you pull off the protector, but I did want to make sure that it is actually sticking to the canvas. And the green is not. This one looks like it is the gray, but the green is just starting to tack up. Yeah, it looks like I have to turn up the heat. So let's do that. See how the gray one is sticking down. And it could just be a, because it's a different brand that it is sticking at a different temperature, but 300 shouldn't hurt the gray and maybe it will make the green stick a little bit better. Now the highest we can go with this one is 340. All right, so it's cooled down now and we made sure that it actually stuck to the page. So good. Really nice. Um, so we learned that, so this green was a different brand. This is actually Cricut brand um, HTV or heat transfer vinyl. And it required a lot more heat than this gray stuff that we got that went down with a much lower temperature. So 
So the next thing is to position this around our frame. So we need to go get our frame and stick this on here and make sure it's nice and center. And then we can secure it to the back and then cut off the excess. What do you think about that? I think it looks nice. So we're just going to flip it and keep it in place. And are we just stapling the Yep, we're just going to staple it in place. So we're just going to use a staple gun. I'm just going to get the corners first. So this is how our frame turned out. It turned out pretty good, except a little mistake here. Um, we used too long of staples, so trying to get them in, and then this popped out. But you can't really see it too much if it was far away, but otherwise it turned out pretty cool. And yeah, depending on what kind of frame you use for your project for this reverse canvas, um, ours came unglued and we had to take the extra step of gluing it together, making sure it was square before staining and then putting this stuff on the back. Yours may come together already assembled, glued together and everything. So it may be a step you don't have to do. Another way you could secure this canvas without using staples is using hot glue. So you don't have to use the staples, just we did. Yeah, in hindsight, we probably should have just used hot glue since I didn't have shorter staples. And honestly, I didn't realize how long the staples were in the staple gun. It was just what was in there. And I didn't think that we would have any issues, but we clearly did. So lesson learned. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Craftmas. We have more to come, so stay tuned for those. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications to you at my every single time I post a video. Stay crafty. And be merry. Bye.